Hello guys, today's going to be a bit of a mailbag video. It's coming close to my birthday and I decided I'd buy myself a bit of a birthday present. And it actually came a couple of weeks earlier than I expected. What I've bought is a GTEC, see it there, GTEC 3D printer. And there's the website, you can go and check it out. This is a RepRap Prusa i3, I think it's called, a 3D printer. And um, I just decided I'd get it and see could I uh, maybe improve my models with some 3D printed objects. It's just something that I've wanted for a while and I just decided to uh, take the step and buy it. I bought it on eBay so I was actually searching for Prusa i3 uh, 3D printers on eBay. came across the GTEC one and I decided to go with this one because uh, it cost roughly the same as a lower spec printer from other companies. So this one has come with an LCD and uh, there's a couple of little features that this one has that the base kind of model doesn't have. You'd have to buy them as add-ons on, the uh, on the other printers and the other printer was coming from uh, America. So this cost me roughly 400 euros when you include the import duty there was 62 euros import duty and I think the printer was 320 or 30 euros I can't remember the exact price at the minute but that's uh, that's roughly what it was roughly around 400 euros now I, I don't expect this to be um, super super accurate printing I'd expect it'll be a decent level of printing and it should be good enough for what I want to do I'm hoping to print some parts that might make it a little bit easier to work with the models. So mostly to do with N20 motors. I'm thinking I can print a, a kind of a bracket to hold the N20 motors to the excavator booms. That would be useful uh, instead of having to do it with the copper wire like I, I done on the PC400. Also I was thinking maybe get two of the flipped N20 motors put them back to back and I'd be able to print some sort of a plastic case to hold the two motors together perfectly aligned. That would be pretty ideal. So in future videos you'll see some of my creations as I make them. Another idea was for a, a solenoid based rock hammer for the RC excavator. Uh, something that would be very difficult to do without the printer. So I'll see if we can do that. So let's get down to see what we actually have here. One thing I forgot to say is this came with DHL and uh, I think it only took about an, a week from I ordered it until it arrived here and uh, it was dropped off by courier, signed for, had tracking, everything. So uh, from a shipping point of view it was very, very good job. Uh, normally when I order stuff from China it takes about three weeks so to get it in a week was very surprising. So this is what it's going to ultimately look like, it's a, a well they call it a GTEC i3 Pro but it's basically a, a RepRap Prusa i3. You might have heard of the RepRap uh, printers before, they're the type of printer that uh, you can 3D print the parts and some of the parts are 3D printed. By doing that you kind of make self replicating printers. So. So you get your printer and then you can print parts to make another printer and so on and so forth. Keeps going like that. That was the idea of them. Uh, this looks to be an itinerary of the parts. Shortly after I ordered the printer, someone from uh, GTech sent the uh, build instructions to me uh, via email. So that's pretty handy too. And they are very detailed instructions, or they appear to be. It seems to be packaged pretty well. That's a good sign. We seem to have plenty of acrylic sheets here. They are obviously not 3D printed. I'm not 100% certain but I would guess they're laser cut because it doesn't look like they were machined. So I'm not sure if that's possible to laser cut acrylic that thick but that's what it looks like at the minute. We have our power switch here. We have a, a kettle plug socket there. That's pretty good. 
I like the way they've packaged it here, so it's kind of like pulling out a tray of parts. You can put that to one side. So in our next layer, we have more acrylic pieces, and then here are some 3D printed parts, and this gives you an idea of the what the parts that this printer will produce kind of look like. So you can see it's a bit textured. That's the that's the different layers that the printer has printed. You can kind of see around about here that it prints in a kind of a cross hash. So it kind of prints in diagonals this way and then prints this way. Uh, it looks like it's something like that. And even the edges look pretty tidy. Now I don't know if somebody has tidied this up after it went through the printer. Um, I wouldn't think so because it looks like the edges here are a bit rough. So. I guess this is the finish that you would expect to get from the printer. So it looks it looks reasonable. I mean that's a fairly solid piece of plastic there. If we were able to print parts like this that can fit into our models, they should be pretty decent. So we've a right few of them bits of uh, printed plastic. This is the roll of material that you get with the printer. That's actually uh, there's a decent thickness of material in there. Now I've no idea how long that lasts. Obviously this is my first 3D printer so I can't can't say for sure. Over here we look to have some more acrylic sheets and then this looks to be the heat plate. So if we look at this hot plate here we can see that it's basically copper printed or well I'm, I'm assuming it's copper it might be some other material some other metallic material but it'll be conductive anyway. It, it's printed in a long spiral so it's running back and forward there that would basically act as a very low impedance resistor so when you put your voltage across that uh, you will get a huge amount of current moving through this long conductor and that will cause the conductor to heat up and uh, that's basically how you get this heated plate here you print onto this hot plate because you don't want the plastic part that you're printing to cool too quickly or it will it just won't form properly uh, another thing we have here is the piece of glass. This goes on top of the heat plate here, basically just so that the, the plastic doesn't stick to this board. It, it won't stick to the glass, it, it'll just form on the glass. So you put the glass on top, this board heats up the glass and then you print on the print on the glass. When you let your part cool down, it'll then just pop off the glass very easily. I don't think the printer I was looking at that was coming from America had this glass plate on, uh, in the kit so maybe make sure and check that it has that before you order or check that you have some way of getting that plate. The last thing on this level is the LCD screen and the little controls. Now you can see here there's an SD card slot and basically this is an add-on feature for the RepRap printer and it means that you can put your design on the SD card, navigate to it with your LCD and just start printing. You don't need to hook up to your computer. So that's a very useful additional feature and that's another reason why I went with this kit. So that's that layer. Now we're down into looks like most of the electronics. So this is uh, the controller board. Get what it's called. Sang Sanguino Lolu. That's what it looks to be. So basically, it is an Atmel chip. I think it has an Arduino bootloader, and this board is just built so that it has proper power management. You're going to need heavier voltage regulators than your normal Arduino board and it has these stepper motor drivers so these just sit into the sockets on the top of the on the top of the Sanguilolo board here so all these black black sockets here so it's just normal pin header they stick in there and then I think, I'm pretty sure it's a USB connection you can just upload the code to it I presume it already has the software on it. I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, I'll have to go through the, um, the instructions to find that out. 
but that's basically all that's required to control this it's very very basic the motors are just normal little stepper motors so what does that say doesn't say what it is but I presume they're 12 volt stepper motors and um, those little driver boards there they just control them and the socket on the or the plug on the um, stepper motor here just sits into one of these sockets here somewhere I presume and so it's all pretty much just plug and play very simple well I think it's going to be simple we'll, we'll see when I've actually gone through the trouble of building it how simple it turns out to be this looks to just be our cables obviously that's no use to me um, USB cable that could be an okay brand uh, a lot of time when you get these USB cables from China they I think they're they're just noisy cables and uh, you know they're not built to their best quality so you can get noise and then when you get noise you start to make mistakes and or you start to lose data you don't want to lose data with this kind of thing so I might just use a cable that I know is a good cable with this with some wrapping to tidy up your cables and this just sits on the top of the printer and you uh, put the roll on here so you stick the roll on you mount this on the top of the printer then as the printer uh, pulls on the on the um, plastic it's just pulled or just pulls the reel around so I think that's what that's for but uh, we need to check that's another one of the things that comes with this printer that didn't come with the other printer but again it's not exactly a complicated piece I mean well the the LCD from the other uh, section there that that was a complicated piece uh, but this you could make this yourself very simply in here I presume this is the power supply that looks like uh, oh it's a file so you've got a little file there some uh, cable ties then in here it's going to be a power supply presumably as you can see there it's uh, 12 volts 15 amps DC out and either 110 or 220 volts in uh, it looks like a fairly old fashioned all through hole parts single sided PCB so you need to be pretty careful with your connections here you wouldn't be going near any of this side when uh, you have this plugged into the mains uh, in fact I wouldn't touch any of it uh, when it's plugged into the mains this shield in here would be supposed to prevent uh, any kind of arcs getting out this should be uh, mains rutted this entire frame here that's why the power supply is inside that it's to prevent you getting a shock but still I wouldn't touch it I wouldn't go near it just to be on the safe side so obviously this power supply is going to require some wiring to the mains electricity we've seen this wire earlier with the kettle plug so all these connections are going to be your mains connections and they go into the front of the power supply here so you need a reasonable understanding of mains electricity to wire this up safely but if you know an electrician or can get a hand from an electrician you know there's no harm just making sure that you have this 100% right because you don't want to damage the power supply and you definitely don't want to uh, get yourself hurt you know you wouldn't touch any of this stuff when it's uh, when it's connected to the mains you know if you were working on this you'd have to unplug everything if you plug this into the mains and then you unplug it to work on it you still have to be careful because these power supplies have these large capacitors here and they'll build up quite a charge inside them that can give you a very nasty shock if they're not discharged properly now you would assume that the power supply has a has some built-in components to dissipate that charge but you know you need to be careful just in case it doesn't you, you can still get a nasty shock from stuff like this even though uh, it wouldn't be as bad as the mains obviously so you just need to be careful with these with this little bit of wiring or making changes here definitely if you know an electrician who can help you with the wiring then you should definitely take advantage of that and uh, just to uh, be on the safe side and so in here we seem to have all our mechanical pieces our nuts and different uh, different rods 
I've just tried a bar and these smooth rods so the that will help the um the the heated pad to move around as you print your um print your different parts. So that's all nice useful stuff. Uh, all this is basically all the mechanical pieces of the machine. We have some we have some rubber belts, they're gonna connect to the stepper motors, uh, lots of different bolts. There's the gears that mate with the belts. Uh, little plastic spacers. They look like heat sinks. Little bits of wire. This looks to be limit switches. So for our stop our axes uh, breaking themselves. I guess they're for connecting to the uh, to the rods in some way. This is the extruder head, so we have a stepper motor here and our our plastic that we want to melt is going to be fed in through here it gets pulled in by our stepper motor into the heated area where it gets melted and then uh, it's extruded through this nozzle and I don't know if you can see there, it's a very very small pinhole that the, that the plastic actually comes out through with that we should be able to get a pretty fine uh, print and accuracy or reasonably I mean this is only a 400 euro printer it's not going to be 100% accurate it's going to be reasonably accurate there's a fan here with a heatsink on this motor so I would guess that that is to stop the uh, motor getting overheated by the um, extruder head here or the, the heating element in the extruder head so I guess that just cools it down to stop the motor getting damaged so last thing here is a little screwdriver set. That looks a bit cheap but it, yeah, it'll probably do alright. Plenty of screwdrivers anyway so we won't have any trouble putting the printer together. I seem to have used an entire SD card already so that would be about an hour's worth of footage I've shot. So I'll end this video now but when I'm building the printer I'll uh, record that and I'll build a kind of a time lapse video so it'll be uh, just to build sped up and I'll cut out all the gaps because I'd say it'll probably take me a couple of hours to uh, assemble it all together you know there's no point you sitting through an hour or two of me bolting stuff together I'll speed it up and if there's anything I think is interesting I'll slow down or zoom in and you know that'll be in an upcoming video anyway and then after that obviously I'll do a couple of tests and then hopefully make something for an RC tractor or something like that. So with any luck we'll be able to use the 3D printer and the models and you'll see it, parts from it featuring in uh, quite a few videos in the future. So that's that, thanks very much for watching.